If you're new to the ServiceNow ecosystem and are not currently employed in a ServiceNow role, you've probably been practicing on your personal developer instance, doing hands-on lab work, you may have even been accepted and participated in an accelerated training or externship program, but in the end, you took the ServiceNow Fundamentals course, you obtained that voucher, and you passed your Certified System Administrator exam. So what happens now? At this point, you feel you've done everything you can, but you're not getting interviews, you're not getting job offers, and you're frustrated when looking at job descriptions and experience requirements, and now you're confused and you don't know what to do. Did you waste your time? Was it all worth it? Hi, my name is Alan Andreas, and welcome to Alan Ovation. In this episode, I'll be addressing some of the frustration I'm seeing from individuals who are newer to the ecosystem and I'll help explain a few things that may give you a different perspective on where to apply for your first ServiceNow job. I'll also mention a few tips and tricks that you can use to differentiate yourself from the pack. To start, let's review the purpose of the Certified System Administrator Certification, which at times I'll refer to as CSA as we go along. The CSA cert is intended to display without words that you have the basic understanding of the platform fundamentals and have acquired the knowledge related to configuration, implementation, and maintenance of the ServiceNow system in accordance with ServiceNow standards. As much as you probably do not want to hear this, the certification alone does not mean it's a one-way ticket to a six-figure salary. To elaborate further, having the CSA cert can help you during the interview process, but it does not guarantee that you'll get the job. Being certified for system administration is a great first step, but the current guidance, at least from my perspective, is that anyone that regularly works with ServiceNow should at least take the ServiceNow Fundamentals course. This includes project and engagement managers, business analysts, quality control or assurance analysts, and others. They may not attempt or have the certification, so you do have one up on them there, but the point here is that it's table stakes to have that base level of knowledge on the platform. With this now in mind, it's imperative that you differentiate yourself as best as you can. Organizations, recruiters, and the ecosystem at large have a different opinion of what a ServiceNow system administrator does day to day. The common misconception is that a system administrator will essentially design and edit forms, create and work with custom fields, maybe configure a client script or UI policy here and there, manage groups and group members, and possibly adjust system properties and manage access controls. And that's about it. All of that may have been true 10 years ago, but today, there's an expectation, even if unspoken, that a system administrator should know how to build and develop on the platform. While the title advertised in the job description may not look like you need to be a developer, let's put all kidding aside and face reality that nearly all organizations expect or think that the system administrator participates in development to some extent. As ServiceNow continues to make itself accessible to pretty much anyone by its ever-growing list of no-code and low-code development-based platform offerings, it's imperative that if development is not your strong suit, that you understand at a minimum applications such as App Engine Studio or AES, Catalog Builder, and Flow Designer, just to name a few. If you were thinking a system administrator was an entry-level role, and as odd as it may sound, a system administrator does not stay entry-level for very long. When looking for a job within the ServiceNow market, did you know that there's actually three different routes you could go? For example, you could work for a ServiceNow customer, work for a ServiceNow partner, work directly for ServiceNow. Or, and this is highly unlikely as you're just starting out, but you could potentially freelance. It's important to understand the different routes because there's opportunities and obstacles that may not be obvious to you when you're first starting out in this market. Let's take a deeper look at a few of the opportunities or obstacles, depending on how you look at things, for routes one and two. 
As a side note, we're going to focus on these two routes specifically, as that is where I have experience, and those are going to be the most common routes one would take when they're brand new to ServiceNow. To accomplish our deeper dive, we'll explore these three metrics. Team size, or how big or small your ServiceNow team will likely be at your employer. Experience pace, the rate at which you'd be exposed or need to learn new features and applications within the platform, and the ability to remain a system administrator, the likelihood that you could purposely remain to be just a system administrator and not need to expand your responsibilities much further. In the context of team size when working for a ServiceNow customer, most customers will only build out small teams as they themselves could call in a ServiceNow partner to implement a new product if needed, and so their core team is meant to basically maintain the instance, or if the organization so chooses, they may bootstrap things and have their core team implement ServiceNow applications directly without a partner. Essentially, this translates to the fact where they wouldn't need to build a gigantic ServiceNow team given the circumstances. In some cases, an organization may have multiple smaller teams that are a bit separated where one develops things and then hands over the finished product that has been deployed to production to the maintenance team for future upkeep. You being a brand new sysadmin, you're most likely going to be on this maintenance team to start out with. The team size for this route is commonly small with about three to six members on average. Working directly for a customer will most likely result in a slower experience pace. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, as you'll get to deeply understand the applications you all are currently subscribed to. Most organizations will start out with ITSM, and then over time, as ServiceNow gains traction within the organization, other departments or units will jump on board, and then they'll purchase other applications like Human Resources Service Delivery, HRSD, IT Operations Management, ITOM, or Service Portfolio Management, formerly known as ITBM. Due to this slower pace, it's also common that you may have other duties as assigned, like working on the help desk while also filling in as a platform administrator. In this route, you may be able to ride out into the sunset as a system administrator and never really need to learn much else about the platform outside of what your organization has purchased. You can certainly learn new things on your own or as requirements arise, but you'll most likely be assigned basic system administrator tasks that I mentioned earlier. This, of course, depends on how the team is structured, but there's definitely a high chance that you could remain a system administrator for quite some time. Let's explore what working for a ServiceNow partner could look like using those same metrics. But before we jump into that, I wanted to clarify what I mean by a ServiceNow partner. In this context, a ServiceNow partner is an organization that has a contractual agreement with ServiceNow and can provide ServiceNow services to customers ranging from product implementation, consultation, managed services, and more. ServiceNow ranks them in three tiers known as Specialist, Premier, and Elite. Your average partner organization will have a medium to large team size. Now, I have seen Elite partners with as few as 15 members, and then other Elite partners with a thousand plus ServiceNow team members. Some of this depends on if they're a ServiceNow peer play company, which means they only work with ServiceNow. In this case, the team size may be between 150 and 300 team members. If the organization is quite large and they do much more than ServiceNow, chances are their ServiceNow business unit may have over 400 or more ServiceNow team members. You'd want to consider if a larger or smaller team size is an opportunity or an obstacle to you. There are benefits to both sides. The experience pace when working with ServiceNow partners is going to be medium to high. This is because, by nature, the organization is in the business of bringing ServiceNow products and features to customers, and with that comes the opportunity to work with numerous ServiceNow applications. Most likely, you'll start off with ITSM, but commonly, you'll be encouraged and can cross-train or move to a specific practice within the organization. A practice within the organization could be focused on a specific ServiceNow product, like customer service management, or known as CSM, or human resources service delivery. 
most partner companies will have yearly requirements related to attending training and achieving new certifications, and so expectations are usually high to learn more than just the fundamentals of the platform. You'll also most likely work on two or more projects at one time. Taking the experience pace I just mentioned into consideration for this metric, you can probably surmise that the ability to remain as a system administrator with only basic platform knowledge to include ITSM and no need to learn other new products or features is going to be low. There may be some edge cases where you could possibly be allowed to stay just a system administrator, but most likely that's not going to happen. All of the information I've provided are just generalizations and in the end, you control your destiny and how far you go with the platform. It's up to you and your interests and career goals. The main point of this video was to provide a different perspective and give justification and a bit of context to the growing need for you to learn the platform more than just the fundamentals and more than just studying or reading about it. Remember, learning as much as you can, and then actually putting that knowledge to work by building within your personal developer instance, learning use cases from the ServiceNow community forums, networking with peers and other ServiceNow professionals, attending webinars and other free training given by ServiceNow and other trusted ServiceNow professionals, and participating in lab exercises will help you differentiate yourself from others. Don't forget that soft skills like the ability to work on a team, time management, creative thinking, and public speaking are also very important to know and list on your resume. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I do hope that you've learned something. If you enjoy ServiceNow content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and like this video. Once again, my name is Alan Andreas, host of Alan Ovation. Until next time, take care.